the Marinis or the Dipetas? Are you on my hunger page yet? Yes. Everybody hear my hunger? Yes. yes. Everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your name? Jackie. Say that again. Jacqueline. I go by Jackie. Jackie. All right. Okay, everybody here know who I am? No. Everybody <laughs> here? We just met officially today. So I'm just an agent here. I'm not a broker or associate broker. Just. I'm just an agent. Just. Okay, I work. I work the same job that you guys do. Um, but here's my thing. So I sit through classes down here, and sometimes I wonder why a certain person is teaching a class. What qualifications do they have to be teaching me something? So. Let me preface this whole thing by telling you that I've owned my own business for 32 years and I've never seen an operation quite like this one, whereas they have created a culture of learning and help and assistance and I've never been with any other brokerages so I can't compare them to another place that I've been, but I have been a business owner for that long and what these guys have created here is awesome. So it's guys like me that have a little knowledge that, that are willing to share it is what I think they've created here, which just is really cool. Like, it's just amazing. So that's not a sales pitch. Everybody already is an agent here. So so that's just me telling you that why I think I'm qualified to be standing up here instead of sitting there with you guys. So I was, uh, my dad figured it out really early. When I was a little kid, um, I wanted to buy something. And, and my dad said, well, go get a job. I was five. He said, well, go get a job, and then you can buy it, buy it or whatever. So I made paper airplanes and went and sold them door to door. And I charged a nickel piece. And I came back with this money, and my dad's like, where'd you get this money? I said, I made paper airplanes and sold it. And my dad was just like, what are you kidding me? <laughs> so when I wanted to go to college, my dad refused to pay for my college education because he felt like I was born with a master's degree in bullshit. So what do you need college for? That was his work. I so I ended up I ended up going in the service instead of college anyway. So <laughs> anyway, I was born with the gift of being able to talk to people. So if I can share some of the things that work for me and, and they might work for you, I know that we've talked about stuff that works and some will, some won't. So kind of take this with a grain of salt and just kind of roll through it. Um, the reason there's a parental advisory at the start of my class is because I'm from the south side of Chicago and I, I have very small filter and I end up getting myself <laughs> in trouble once in a while. So I'm just kind of trying to let you know right up front that I, I speak no BS. I don't, I take out all the fluff. So, all right, so take it. I, I will try not to offend anybody, but sometimes I'm not so good at that. So, so there was a couple options on what to call this class. Um, and uh, Kelly, Kelly mixed them. So the original alternate class title was How to Turn a Stranger into a Client in 30 Seconds or Less. The next one was my favorite, um, Expose Yourself to Strangers and See What Happens. <laughs> Kelly didn't, that wouldn't, that wouldn't fly with the board. Um, grow a set and say hello. You guys can take that hard. But are you getting my drift? This is kind of like just this is about you know taking off the taking the gloves off and, and going and getting it. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. So this is all about how to get business today. And it's none of this you learned in real estate school. This is all uh, I have a master's degree from the school of hard knocks. Okay. So if I could just bear with me for just a second, everybody just stand up for one second. Okay. And when I put something up on the board that is something that we have in common. Have a seat, okay? Okay. All right, I'm Catholic. What if you're Catholic but you don't practice? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> the whole point of this is to show you how we have something in common with everyone. Okay. So, so I'm Catholic. I love sports. I'm a Navy veteran. I'm a business owner. Don't count that one because we're all guilty. Um, I lived in Chicago, California, Arizona, Colorado, and Texas. You lived in Arizona, sit down. I've done it, I've done it. No, that's okay, I've done business all over the US. You get my point? So we're not even halfway down the list, and we already have something in common. So the point is, you have something in common with everybody, it's just a matter of how you find it, okay? I'm a family man, I'm married. Um, my passion is coaching kids. 
Um, Jim Zabo from Union Mortgage is my lender partner, and I met him because I was coaching his kid who was just an idiot, and I got stuck with him. <laughs> so, and that's how I met Jim. So, um, I'm a Republican. I did 20 years in the furniture business. I spent four years as a loan officer. I spent two years as a title rep. I spent one year teaching realtors how to buy properties at auction. And I have a master's degree from the School of Hard Knocks. So my whole point here is that you got something in common with everybody. So if you're doing an open house or you're standing in front of the grocery store or however it is that you get business, there's always something you got in common with people. Just a matter of finding it. Okay, and, and figuring out what it is. So raise your hand if you have children. One like it. Okay, so so that is without question my go-to. If somebody has kids, trust me, they like you their kids way better than they like you, and you the same. But if you're raising kids, you have something in common. You love something more than yourself. And that's your children. Ninety-nine percent of the time. <laughs> Jim, in your case, I can understand why maybe that's not <laughs> Um, so let's kind of get into it here. Um, buyer broker agreements. This might be the wrong class, but that's okay. Let's, let's cover it. Who in here will take buyers out without a buyer broker agreement? Actually, who in here has worked with buyers without a buyer broker agreement? I did, but I okay, wasn't happy about okay, it. Yeah, I did too. Big mistake. Will I ever do it again? No. If they don't want to sign a buyer broker, a, you're not presenting it right, and B, maybe you don't want them as a client. And let's go back to that last screen about all those things. You have a decision to make, okay? Um, I have no problem letting people know that I'm Catholic. I have no problem letting people know that I'm a Trump guy. I have no problem letting people know that I'm Republican. That's my choice. You may not want to make that choice. In today's day and age, there's a lot of stuff that people will go, whoa, I, you know, it's getting crazy out there where yeah. if you like, if you're a Democrat or Republican, people like just don't even want to talk to you if you're not what they are. So that's totally up to you on whether or not you want to do that. I don't have any problems with it. I have no issues with it for two reasons. Um, a, if somebody doesn't want to work with me because I'm Republican or Catholic or whatever, I probably don't want to work with them either. You know what I mean? If, if it's going to be contentious, we're getting into, we're starting off on the wrong foot right off the bat. So, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm going to have something in common with everybody that that we're all gonna like, but there's definitely gonna be things that maybe they don't like. You just gotta make a decision on whether or not you wanna do it. There's plenty of business out there. I don't wanna argue with them. I mean, whether or not you argue with them is a whole nother thing. I don't argue if, if they know what my political views are and they don't like it, but they still wanna work with me and, and express that in a professional manner, I'm fine with it. I don't, we don't have to discuss that. Just I don't have a problem with people knowing, okay? Don't be afraid of the buyer broker agreement. It just makes you look more professional. Your, your truer words have never been spoken, okay? Um, if, if somebody shies away from a buyer broker agreement, two things have happened. You didn't explain it properly, which is probably the reason most of the time, or they've had a bad experience and you gotta get to the bottom of it and tell them why that's not true, okay? A buyer broker agreement protects both you and them. And just explain it to them. And don't be yes them. Just be straight with them. Say, I'm going to put a lot of hours in. I'm going to work really hard for you. We have to have, this is a business. This is a business deal. We have to have some kind of agreement. It's good for you. It's good for me. And that's a whole other class. I can tell you how I handle that. Might be different than how you do. So today, um, everything that I'm going to show you, you already have the tools to do. You need a real estate license. Everybody in here have a real estate license? Raise your hand. Yep, everybody. Okay. You have a cell phone? Everybody got a cell phone? Lenny, a cell phone is this thing that we carry. <laughs> you know that, that string and that cup you use? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't work? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, not like, you know, the Stone Age, because Lenny's been in business for 150 years now. I think I have a cup better. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 the stuff I'm going to throw out today, some will work and some won't, but hopefully you'll come away with something that will make you armed and dangerous and help you to generate more business. Okay, so if everybody's ever been in my class, you know that I always tell you that, that my biggest thing, and I have a, I don't have my camera thing. I just created a, uh, my marketing piece, and it's beautiful. It came out, it's a four color, beautiful handout piece. And one of the things I discuss in there is shoes. And the question is, 
what makes a great realtor or what makes a realtor great? And my answer is shoes. And the reason I say shoes is I try to put myself in other people's shoes, okay? Um, you're different, Jackie, than Jim, and, and everybody's different than Lenny. So everybody's got stuff, though, in their life, okay? Um, divorce, health, I'm broke, bankruptcy. I mean, everybody's got crap in their life. Everybody's dealing with something, okay? Not my business, okay? But respect the fact that everybody's dealing with something, okay? If you can find out what that is, it may help you. <laughs> But that's a really slippery slope to try to find out what that is. If you respect the fact that everybody's got something going on in their life that may not be perfect, you'll be better off because they'll respect you that you've got stuff going on in your life. So I was managing a, a, a sales team of 100 salespeople, and I had everybody come in one day, and our numbers were a little bit down. Everybody was dealing with the economy. was starting to tank, and there was all this stuff. So I had everybody sit down, and in front of them was a paper bag and an index card. And I said, I want everybody to write all their shit on this index card and put it in the bag. So they all did it, and I said, nobody's gonna read them, but we're all gonna go through this. Then we walked outside, and we took all those paper bags and set them outside the front door of the sales office. Everybody went back in, and everybody's scratching their head, because I come up with some harebrained stuff once in a while, like, where is he going with this? So my explanation was simple. Take all your crap, stuff that's going on in your life, leave it outside the door, come in, do your job, eliminate that stuff for a couple hours, just come in and do your job and maybe some of that stuff will go away. If you do your job and maybe you get a deal and that helps you financially because one of the things that you had in that bag was financial difficulty or I wanna get my kid G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip and I can't afford the Kung Fu grip but I can get regular G.I. Joe or whatever, you know, whatever it is. So. Think about that when you're as you're going through your day and try to eliminate that stuff, get it out of focus and focus on what it is that you have to do. Okay, so does anybody have one of these? Anybody wear one of these? No? Yes. Anybody not have one of these? Get it where I already got those. You can get them. They got you can order them. They got people who can order them from here. If you don't have one of these, get one. And when you go to the grocery store, wear it. And if you go to Home Depot, wear it. Let people know anything. Let people know your realtor. I was getting gas the other morning, and on the side of my car, I got the magnet. It says Johnny Walker, Realtor, U.S. Mm -hmm. Veteran, with my phone number. Some guy filling up his car, and he goes, hey, is there any condos in this area? We're moving down here from Michigan kidding me just because I had this magnet on the side of my car mm -hmm. opened up a conversation I got his name and address set up an appointment now I'm out looking for a condo for him and his wife and they have four friends they're all thinking about doing the same thing nice. that's five deals just because I had my name on my car and I'm willing to talk to people okay and I'm not shy so if you're in a grocery store I'll find something to talk to somebody mm -hmm. about in the grocery store okay so Wear it. Let it, it's a billboard, okay? I just took seven billboards in, in Chicago, and I can't wait for my friends to, from Chicago to start calling me going, you idiot, I just saw your sign on the expressway, and you know, let people know what you do, okay? What's that? I didn't use a picture of me, I, didn't, I wanted people to actually call, so I didn't. But so, you're for the billboards. So, actually you can too. So, um, so when you put this on, keep in mind that you're now interviewing for a job. So if somebody's looking for a realtor, they're gonna look at you. If you, if you go to the grocery store and you're stoned out of your head, don't wear your name tag. If you're drunk, <laughs> don't wear your name tag. You know, if you're out partying with the book, separate it. But if you got this on, you're interviewing for a job no matter where you go, anywhere. Grocery shopping, to the mall, be prepared to interview for a job because you're now interviewing. So they're gonna look at what you're wearing. Some people not, might not like the way I'm dressed. Some people might not like Lenny's beard. Some people might not like accents. Who, who knows what it is, but you're, you're interviewing for a job. From the minute you put that thing on, you are now interviewing for a job. So think about when you interviewed for a job. Did you go to your job interview wearing an I hate New York or 
<laughs> sure. I mean, you don't wear it after an interview. So if you got this on, think about it. You're interviewing. So how did you dress? Were you prepared? Um, what are you trying to accomplish? So if I'm wearing this, why? if I'm at the grocery store and I'm wearing this, what am I trying to accomplish? You want to talk with you. Boy. I want to talk to somebody, right? I want somebody to know that I'm a realtor and have a question. So just so I can open up a conversation. Where it goes, who knows? It could go anywhere. But it could work out to some guy with five friends all looking to buy a condo right. that are coming here from Michigan. It just happens, okay? And then ask yourself, did you get the job? And if you didn't, what'd you do wrong? So if you're in line, I'm gonna keep using the grocery store because it's easiest and we all grocery shop. If you're in line at the grocery store and you stink, you just came from the gym or whatever, you just stop, you just cleaned out the horse stables or whatever, and you don't smell real good, guess what? Probably not gonna bode real well. So think about think about what you did. Think about what works and what doesn't, and then learn from it. And then here's my pet peeve. This is my biggest thing. And and so Mark Hutchins and I, he's not just the owner of the company, he's also a friend of mine. And he's at my house, sitting in the backyard, and we're talking and having a cocktail or whatever. And it's, I've been talking to him and he's like this. And now I'm to the point where I just stop talking to him. If he's on his phone, I won't talk to him anymore. It, it, it drives me crazy that when you're talking to people and they're on their phones, and especially when they're asking you questions, okay? So, Jackie, are you married? Mm. How, many, how many kids do you have? Do I give a shit what her answer is? No, no I'm more worried about the text on my phone. And, and how do you feel about that? I don't care how many kids you have, right? So now you just went from, you might like me to, I can't stand this guy. I, don't, I hate this guy. He asked me a question about my kids what, that I love. And he didn't really care. So now all of a sudden you went the complete opposite end of where you were trying to go. Get off your phone. These things are both a, a hindrance and a help. To me, you know, Marco texts me at night and he goes, dude, I texted you an hour ago. Why didn't you call me? And I go, well, I don't, my phone is not attached to my hand. If I'm, if I'm at home watching a, a hockey game with my wife and my son, I'm watching a hockey game. I'd get up during between periods and check my phone, but you know, it's not like, you know? So that's just my thing, it's up to you. I think when you get, you're a little older, I can only speak for Lenny and I, because I don't know anybody else in here, I can break their chops as much, but we're a little older, it's just not the way it always was. We, we've had to adapt to it. That's right. Everybody agree? Technology. Yeah, technology can be, can be good or bad. Okay, so you chose to be a realtor. When you, when you went and got your license, you didn't sign a piece of paper that said, okay, I'm a realtor, and I'm gonna tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anybody know I'm a realtor. You know? It's like, okay, I just graduated from drug dealer school. <laughs> Don't tell anybody I'm a drug dealer. Let people know it's your job. You chose the profession, Get, even if it's getting out of your comfort zone, if you're a little quieter, you haven't said a word all day, you might be a little quieter than me. Get out of your comfort zone. Say hi to people. I'm not picking on you. Like, <laughs> louder than they me. All do. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So there's no room for shyness. Okay? If you are shy and if you do have a problem starting conversations with people, get one of these. You just started a conversation. You didn't even have to say anything. This is a perfect excuse to start a conversation. Let them start it. If you're uncomfortable starting the conversation, let them start it, okay? But they're not gonna know to start it if it doesn't say real through on your name. But I yeah. haven't had a badge to be able to do that. I just talk with people. Some people can do that, some people can't, okay? Don't be a secret agent. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, so let's just quick go over. What's, what's your one your go-to method of finding business? I go into the store and talk with people. Okay. Uh, Facebook. Uh, knock and doors. Okay. Buckley? Sorry. What, Buckley, right? Yeah. What's your go-to thing to get business? You do a lot of phone work, right? Sure. Okay. Cold calls, phone, networking. Wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Praying. <laughs> um, this year, open houses. 
Open houses, they're looking. Open houses. Open houses, okay. So my big thing is open houses. I get a ton of business from open houses. <laughs> Tons. It's, I built my business doing open houses. And I truly believe that if I do one deal, I'm getting two more out of it. And if you don't have that thought process okay. going in, you're cheating yourself. You got to do such a good job that they're going to refer at least two people aunt, sister, cousin, uncle, neighbor, work person, uh, somebody at the firehouse, whatever. Your job is to do such a good job that you're going to get another referral from them. So if I can pick up one lead at an open house and do business with them and find them a house or list their house or whatever, then I really got three that day. That's the way I see it. So if I pick up four, or if I pick up five, then I figure I got 15. And then that 15 is going to turn into what? Then I got 45, and then I got 90, and then that's the way my business has been built. That's my thing. So um, I'm not big on internet leads. I, I, some people do it, some people don't. For me, it doesn't work because you got to be the first one to call them, and you got to be right on top of it. Doesn't fit my profile. It doesn't fit my daily routine, but it does you. I hear you on the phone all the time. You're really good on the phone. That's your thing. Um, Work in your CRM, that's your sphere. That's my second, that's my second biggest thing. Um, Facebook and social media. So I don't, I'm an idiot. When it comes to chat face and snap pictures and Insta pictures, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a moron. I, I just don't get it. I, I'm never going to, so I, they win. You know, the younger realtors coming in are really good at that. And I'm never gonna be as good at them, so I just don't, it's just not my thing. So I do a little bit of Facebook, but it's very, very specific to Minnesota and Illinois and Wisconsin to get people that are moving here. That's kind of my thing on Facebook. But other than that, it's all about, you know, open house and work in my spirit. Um, partners, these are, these are all Lenny's. Does this have a pointer thing? Uh, luck, prayer, wishful thinking, and then we throw. These are, this is the Lenny section. Love yeah, I like prayer, those. wishful thinking, that's yeah. Lenny's mainstay. I like those. Okay. I'm just picking on Lenny because he's my buddy, so he's actually really smart, probably smarter than all of us. So, um, so guerrilla marketing, I'm gonna cover here in a second, okay? So the commonality thing, we talked about everybody stood up and then everybody eventually sat down when we found something I had in common with everybody. So let's just take open house because the majority of people said open house or talking to people. So what do you have in common with everybody? Well, we all have a family. Unless you were adopted and the entire family got wiped out, God forbid, most of us all have a family. So you've got that in common. <clears throat> what do families have? Families have problems. Problem. Families have great times, parties. They, you know, so find something common you know, that everybody shares as far as family. Um, so in the furniture business, I, I was doing business in Salt Lake City and it took me eight years to get into the biggest retailer up there, R.C. Willie, because they're Mormon, and they dealt with Mormons. And they, every chance they got to do business with Mormons, they would take that before they would if you were Catholic or Jewish or Buddhist or Muslim or whatever. Mormons deal with Mormons, Jews deal with Jews. I'm not being racial, racial here, I'm just telling you that's the nature of, of business. People like to deal with somebody they have in common. Now the Mormons take it a step further with the religious belief. Okay. But it took me eight years. Once I got in, I was in. But it took me forever. They even went to the, to the extent of trying to get another person hired to handle their account because they were Mormon. Didn't work. Luckily, my boss stood behind me and said no, because they wanted to buy my product. Didn't work. So, so use that to your advantage. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to get racial or insensitive here. I'm just saying there's a lot of that in business that works. Uh, every single one of us breathe. So if you can't think of anything else to say, what about, man, it's smoggy outside. It, it's like I have asthma or something. Or, or if somebody's coughing, say, is it good? All of a sudden, you've got something to talk about. You might not, that might not be the perfect thing to use, but you never know what it's going to take to break that seal. Just start talking to people. We all eat. So especially open houses. Next time you do an open house, find out, and I got a new one, find out where the closest Mexican restaurant is, the closest Chinese restaurant. Those are the two big ones. You know, so if somebody comes in, 
Or if they, they say, oh, we're just the neighbors. Oh man, I'm glad you stopped by. I'm starving, I wanted to get some Chinese when I'm done. What's the best Chinese place around here? All of a sudden now, they, they get to give you some information. They feel important. You just open the door to have a conversation about what the best, what do you use to get when you eat Chinese food? Well, I like that food on there. You just start the, start the process. Just get up somebody to open up talking about whatever it might be, okay? My newest thing on open houses is I'll find out from the neighbors where the closest animal hospital is. Because mm -hmm. it seems like everybody has a pet nowadays. Mm -hmm. So when people come in, be different. Not a lot of realtors are doing that when they're doing open houses. They're not saying, hey, do you have pets? There's a, there's a pet hospital two blocks over. It's over on Bell and 64th Street. It's yep. called such and such. That's a really good one. People really open up to that because they love their pets. Okay, we all live in Arizona. Let's talk about the basics. And I'm gonna go right back to my original thing about putting yourself in, in their shoes. So try to read people um, to create. Remember, this whole thing is about the human connection and what it takes to start a conversation. We're all trying to start a conversation. Um, if, if somebody just moved here from Wisconsin and they're looking to buy a house, I don't know that until I talk to them. So I gotta somehow, some way, find out what, what they're about. How's the weather doing? Pardon me? How's the weather doing? Let's get to it. Hang, hang on. We'll, we'll get to it. There's going to be a million of them. We'll get to it. Okay. So our goal is to now start a conversation with everybody if possible because you never know who's looking for a house or who has a brother or who has a cousin or who knows somebody that's thinking about buying a house. That's what we're trying to get to. Or somebody that's thinking about moving back to Wisconsin or back to Chicago or maybe they want to list their house. So I do open houses to get listed. Most people do open houses to get buyers. I'm completely the opposite. I knock doors after my open house. I don't knock doors before, unless it's special circumstances. Why not? So, so when I, so when you do an open house, what's the chances of a neighbor coming in? Pretty good, right? There's usually one neighbor, two neighbors that come in. So if a neighbor comes in, I make a huge deal out of it. Oh man, I'm so happy you stopped by. Can you tell me where the closest animal hospital is? Or can you tell me where this, just start a conversation so you're not, don't, when they walk in, go, oh, I'm a neighbor. Great, do you want to list your house? <laughs> you lost. You want to start, you know, get, get, get <coughs> floated. Oh, God, so happy you came by. Which house is yours? Well, we're the house with the blue awning down the street. So now all of a sudden, you know exactly where they are. And there's a house with the blue awning down the street. So when I'm done with the open house, I know his name is Mike. Let's just say it's Mike and Sue. They came down, looked at the open house. Oh yeah, guys, come in, take a look at what they did to the house. Check out the backyard. What side of the street do you live on? This side? Oh, see what they did to block the neighbors or there's a two. Just find something to talk about. They live in the neighborhood. They like the neighborhood. They know the neighborhood. Maybe they're getting ready to move. Maybe they know somebody that wants to move in. You don't know, you gotta find out. Neighbors are gold. So when I tell you I knock doors afterwards, I'm gonna go down to Mike and Sue and I'm gonna have a little notepad, and I'm gonna knock on their door, and I'm gonna say, hey guys, I just wanted to thank you for stopping by my open house. I just thought you should know, I had eight people come through. Um, three of the people just, just it wasn't the right house for them. Two of them, this, and four of them loved it, but it just wasn't the right house for them. So there's a lot of interest in this neighborhood. If you guys had any ideas of maybe listing your house, it might be a good time, because there is definitely interest in the neighborhood, okay? Now they're, they're gonna say, yeah, we've been thinking about it. Why don't you come on in and we'll talk about it. Don't go in the house. Say no. Tell them, tell you what, I've got, I, I try to knock on everybody's door when I'm done. Be professional, I have a job. I have to complete my job before I can come in and talk to you. Now all of a sudden, I look like well, this guy's a pro. He didn't just drop everything to talk to me. Okay, whether I need to or not, tell him this, say, tell you what, I got like six other doors I gotta knock. It's probably gonna take me about a half hour. Do you have any cold beer? Yeah, we got a beer. I said, have a beer waiting for me. I'll be back at 1.45. I said, great. So is your wife gonna be here too? Yeah, we'll both be here. Great, now you got both of them. You wanna talk to one separately or both at the same time? We're Always both, both the at the same, same time. time. So set it up to now. You're taking charge. They don't even know it. I'll be back in 30 minutes. And if they say, yeah, I got a cold beer, have a beer. Don't be afraid to be a person, okay? So you might not want to do that. I have no problem doing that. Yeah, let's have a beer. I'll be done working. Let's let's chat. 
So now I can go knock those other six doors, but what have I also done? I've given myself enough time because of technology that I can go on and get a kind of an idea of what their house is worth before I even step in the door. Okay, I got 15 minutes, 20 minutes to just get an idea, pull up an RPR report. You know, they're usually close within like $3,000, three to $5,000. So now when you walk in, just have a nice friendly conversation. Tell them something funny that happened at the open house. Don't be the sales guy right away, be their new friend. Say, God, these people came in and they had this kid that was just jumping out of bed. And I was like, you know, whatever, come up with something to talk about, okay? Did you know the people that are, did you know the people that are moving? Oh yeah, they're great people. We're so sad to see them go and, you know, talk about something they know. Let them think that they're running the conversation and really you aren't. That's why I knock doors after. Because I'm looking for listings. I get buyers, every open house. Jim, how many open houses have you been to with me? A few. Okay, I get buyers all the time, organically. They just come and I can talk. So I'll get by, and I'm gonna show you my open house signing sheet, and you'll see why I get them. There's, it's, it's right to the point, and I tell them exactly how I work. But I want listings. Listings lead to more business for me. That's my choice. Okay? I love the signing sheet. Yeah. Okay, so are they chatty? Are they funny? If they're, if they're stick in the muds, don't try to fight stick in the mud with funny, because it ain't gonna work. So back off a little bit. Try to read. Try to read people as best you can. Are they really serious? <laughs> I'm an idiot, so I'm going to try to make them laugh. If that doesn't work, I'm going to back out of that really quick and go to a more serious kind of mode. But that's me. So read them out. Do they have an accent? Big. What if they have a southern accent? No. Oh, we're from LA. Or Alabama. No, oh, LA, California. Oh, I thought maybe an accent or something. So I'll come up with something like that, something funny. Your accent is gold. People like hearing your accent. You buy this house or I kill you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay? People like accents. It's different. They don't hear it every day. I have blood. It will make you buy this house immediately. <laughs> okay, what kind of clothes are they wearing? This goes both ways. So when I do open houses, I generally dress like this. In the summertime, occasionally I'll wear shorts and golf shirt, just to be a real person. But generally, I dress the way I think people want me to look. That's my opinion, okay? I like to dress professionally. Um, you can go to plenty of open houses. You can go to, I'll, I'll just point this out. Go to a My Home Group Mastermind. Anybody ever been to one of those? Where we all sit around the room? Yeah, yeah, Take a look at the way some people are dressed when they come here. Okay? It doesn't work for me. Okay? I don't ever do business like I just jumped off the treadmill. Just not my thing. Okay? Are they sad? Maybe they're dealing with stuff. Maybe they've got stuff in their life and this is just an escape to get out. Happy. Are they in a hurry? Everyone has a story and put yourself in their shoes. Okay? Um, have an introductory tagline. Um, Whatever your tagline is, you know, my, my thing, I'll show you my tagline when I show you my signing sheet so you understand, but everybody's got a way that, that they, that's their go-to to open up business, okay? Um, whatever that might be. Everybody's got their own kind of thing that they always revert back to that they use to get somebody to start a conversation, okay? All right. Same thing, read your audience. What kind of clothes, jewelry, what kind of car they pull up in, uh, what their accent is, what their demeanor is, and do they have kids? If they have kids, they're gold. And then I will give you a, 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 most everything that I'm telling you today that I'm speaking about, I learned the hard way, okay? If somebody pulls up in a junky old 1978 Pinto, don't dismiss them like they can't afford to buy that house. You could be making a huge mistake. Okay, if they pull up in a brand new Jaguar, don't think that they got the money to buy that house because they might have put everything they had in that car and they can't afford to buy a new pair of shoes. Okay, so don't be fooled by that stuff. Jewelry can tell you a lot about somebody, okay? Um, materialistic or, or, so I coach baseball in Scottsdale and I can't tell you how many moms came to drop their kids off with 
eighty thousand dollars worth of diamonds dripping off their hands and their necks just to take the kids to baseball practice. So you just never know. So read it the way you want to. Figure out how it works. Okay, we're gonna go right back to first impressions. Remember the name tag, the thing on my car. So when when I drive my wife's car, I drive different than I do when I drive my car. Why? Your car has your name on it. My car has my name on it. Okay. So when I borrow Jim's car and he uses my car, I have to tell him before he leaves, do my name's on the side of the car. <laughs> so, of course, I get phone calls. Do you drive like that? <coughs> Whenever he borrows my car. Okay? This is all the same, kind of the same stuff. I, I really don't recommend being drunk or high when you're working. I mean, that's, that's totally up to you. Um, just not, not my thing. Um, here, I'll tell you a quick story. So, uh, when I was selling furniture, I was selling wholesale. And if you sell wholesale furniture in Albuquerque, New Mexico, there's only like five furniture stores in Albuquerque. And one of them is the one you gotta be in, American Furniture in Albuquerque. If you're not selling American furniture, you really don't have a whole lot of business there. So if you are selling them, you don't wanna lose them because you will lose the biggest percentage of business in Albuquerque, or actually the whole state, and you can't just go call on somebody else because there are no other furniture stores. It's not like you're calling on the public, so you really can't screw it up. Long story short, I'm sitting there waiting for the buyer. The buyer knew that he kind of had us by the short ones. He kind of had to do whatever he wanted because he was calling the shots and you needed the business. So me and my, my biggest competitor are sitting there waiting to see him. My, my buddy's got an appointment at 10, mine was at 11. We're sitting there, now it's noon. And he comes out, Mike Smith was his name, and he goes, guys, I'm, I'm really behind. I'm not gonna be able to see you till after lunch. I'm gonna go and get something to eat. Do you guys mind coming back after lunch? Well, you don't say no because there's nobody else to call on more important. Me and that guy go to lunch, we go to Garduno's, we come back, we had tacos, and I had a Diet Coke, he had a Corona. We come back, he goes in, sees the buyer, he's coming out, he said, hey man, I'll see you down the road, you know, in hops or whatever. I go in the buyer's office, he goes, can you believe that guy came in my office drunk? And I was like, what? He goes, I can't believe that guy was drunk in my office. I go, now this is my biggest competitor. I could have thrown him under the bus. I could have made out on this, but it wasn't the right thing to do. And I said, Mike, I, I went to lunch with him. I said, he had a half a beer at lunch. He didn't finish the beer he ordered. And he goes, oh boy, boy, I'm glad you told me that. And then the story got back to him and he bought me a bottle of scotch just to thank me because I could have thrown him way under the bus. The guy had a half a beer. And the buyer, he could have lost the entire state of New Mexico, all his business, because of a half a beer. But that's the same thing. You never know. You just never know. Just because he had booze on his breath. He wasn't drunk. He had a half a beer. I watched it. So but you just got through telling us that it's worth going after an open house and we're meeting with somebody. That that's different. Okay to have that's different. Precedent is set. You're my last stop of the night. If they have cold beer, then they're probably going to have a cold beer. It's up to you on whether or not you want to do it. Handle that yourself, okay? okay. Just, just keep in mind, you're making an impression. You're interviewing. If you got your name tag on, your name on the side of your car, you're interviewing. Are they passive? Are they aggressive? Are they sincere? Let's talk about sincere. So everyone has authenticity radar, okay? You know when someone's bullshitting. If someone's putting out an act, you're going to know it. Most people, you're gonna know it, okay? Some people are really good at it. I try to be authentic to everybody, mostly because I'm too stupid to remember lies. So if I lie to people, I'm not smart enough to remember what I lied to that person about. I can't keep track of it. So I try to be honest all the time and be authentic. Everybody that knows me will tell you that I am authentic to the core. I'm just me. And some people like it, some people don't. That's okay. But I, I, I remain true to myself. People sniff that out. Try to always be authentic and be sincere when you're talking to people. Okay, so I think uh, most everybody said they have kids. Open houses, grocery store, anywhere you go, if people have kids, I own them. Mostly because I've spent my life coaching kids mm -hmm. and I love coaching kids, it's my passion. Um, I have a baseball program in Scottsdale that we put 850 kids through. I will brag a little bit. I got two kids that are playing Major League Baseball that came through my program, and I got five kids in Major League Baseball programs. So I did something right. Um, I'm now retired until Jeremy's kids started playing baseball, and he told me, <laughs> asked me if I could help coach, and I said, no, I'm, I'm retired.
retired. And then you told me he was going to sever my license if it wasn't a practice. <laughs> so I'm coaching still. But, but kids are gold, okay? People love their kids. Okay? You start talking good about their kids, you're getting in the easy way. You're slipping in the back door with no charge, and you're getting caught. Okay? So when I get kids that come into my open houses, I take a business card, and I... I I don't even talk to the parents, I talk to the kids. I'm like, you guys are having so much fun looking at houses today, right? And the kids are like, yeah. And I go, I get it, I get it. There's like a zillion other things you wanna do. So I got a job for you. Can you do one job for me? And they're looking at me like, yeah. And I give them my card and I said, wait till you get in the car and then give this to your mom and dad. Can you do that? And they'll take it. I go, don't give them to them until they get in the car because I don't want them throwing it away. All right, now they got a job. Now, I, what have I done? Their parents are looking at me like, wow, this guy just connected with my kid. It's almost like a dog sniffs people out. Mm -hmm. You know, if the kids react to you, parents like that. If you can find a way to get their kids to react or laugh, or, or if you have candy, you pay to don't, yeah, pay attention to the kids. Don't let them have candy unless, hey, if your mom and dad say it's okay, you guys help yourself to one of those candy bars. But your mom and dad gotta say it's okay first. And then they'll look at mom and dad, now I'm a hero. I just gave their kids candy. Their kids don't want to be out looking at houses. That's the last thing they want to do. They're getting dragged. So try to make it fun for the kids. Open up something for the kids. Now you've got a connection with their kids. Their parents will listen to you much better now that you've created some kind of synergy with their kids. They're gold for me. Okay? I, I literally ignore the parents until I'm done with the kids. Okay? Give a card to the kid, be sincere, ask the kids questions. Now, I have, it's really easy for me because I ask them all if they play baseball. Well, why don't you play baseball? What do you play? Oh, I play soccer. Soccer? Where are you from? Like, isn't that a Brazilian sport or something? You know, and kids will be like, no, no, soccer's cool when they get in there. I say, well, I coach baseball. I don't know more about soccer. You play baseball? And then if they play baseball, I actually will take it too far. I'll be like, really? What would you like? I might be recruiting a 10-year-old pitcher or something, you know? So so I'll spend a lot of time with the kids, especially when it comes to like sports and stuff like that. I'm better with little boys than I am little girls only because I coach boys. Don't can make that weird. I'm just <laughs> just better. Okay, when and where? Open houses, Starbucks, the grocery store. So what what just real quick, somebody tell me. You're in line at the grocery store. What's a way to open up a conversation with somebody that's in front of you in line? Real quick. Pick um, something. If they have uh, vegetable meat, how do you cook that? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Or if they have something you're unfamiliar with, say, hey, I don't mean to be nosy or nothing, but how do you, how do you cook that? Or what do you use that for? Or somebody told me about this. Old Bay seasoning on shrimp. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Or you'd be amazed how fast people are going to be to go. Oh yeah, we've used that. You know, you should try maybe doing this or, or uh, if uh, if they're Hispanic, not trying to get weirder. If they're if they got stuff to make guacamole, yeah. I'll say, hey, can you help a white guy make some guacamole? Because I don't know. How to, do you put cilantro in it? Some people don't like cilantro, so find a way to talk to them about something. You'll be amazed how fast they'll mm -hmm. open up. Amazed. I thought a conversation started with pizza. Pizza. What if what if somebody in front of you has got a 12 pack of beer, uh -huh. a bottle of wine, a bottle of vodka? So obviously it's not all for them. They're having a party, right? Yes. So so I will literally I will literally pull out a business card and a pen and I'll go, What's your address? <laughs> They'll be like, What? I said, well, obviously you're having a party and I didn't get an invitation, so what should I bring? Because I can go back and get whatever. I do that all the time. My wife just sits and goes, oh. <laughs> all the time, all the time. And I've gone to parties that I got invited to stand in and stand in the line because they're gonna tell all their friends, I met this guy at the grocery store. And then, who do you think they're gonna tell about? When they get to the party, they're gonna be like, this idiot, I met him at the grocery store. He's great, he's really fun. You would be amazed when you show up just for 10 minutes, show up, oh, I'm a realtor, this is how I meet people. He's nuts, folks. I do it all the time, it works. It's amazing. Okay, schools. Um, so there's a lot of lenders. Um, and, and Jim, you can tell us whether or not, does Union Mortgage 
have any special programs for first responders or teachers or military or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, every lender's got it. Just so, but yeah, absolutely. Every lender's got it. So if they've got a program for teachers, why not go to the school and find out, hey, can I hang out in the teacher's lounge for an hour? I'm not going to bug anybody. Just to let everybody know that there's some new programs out there for teachers. I'll just hang out. And You'd be surprised how many schools will let you do that. Just hang out. Don't sell. I'm just here to give information. They all know somebody that's a realtor. Okay? But now all of a sudden you're doing something that the person they know isn't doing. You never know how that's going to open up. I do it. It works. Um, grocery stores are gold. Kids events, that goes without saying. Craft fairs, that's like the worst thing I do because I would rather have my good old what's pounded flat than go to a craft fair. Um, everywhere. Okay, so um, who in this room got a referral last year from the AC guy? I got a $1.2 million listing from my AC guy. Because he went to this lady's house whose hair was going out, her husband died, she was, now the AC's not working, she called the AC guy, he comes out, she tells him, yeah, I know, Maury died like three months ago, and I'm trying to figure out, and I'm probably gonna have to move, and my AC guy goes, you know what, call Johnny, Johnny will help you out. He goes above and beyond that, he'll help you figure out how to move and what to do, he's really good. And lo and behold, she called me up, the $1.2 million listing I got in Platinum, uh, Fountain Hills. Okay, so if you don't have an air conditioning guy, a painter, an electrician, good luck with electricians, they're all flakes. I still don't, I still don't have a good one. Um, a handyman, you need all these people anyway. So when your clients buy a house and they're going, they just moved here from Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania or Chicago, they don't know anybody. They're gonna come to you and go, Johnny, do you have an electrician? Yeah, call this guy. Do you have a painter? Do you have a roofer? Do you have AC guys? Yeah. So you're gonna be referring them business too, especially painters. Everybody uses a painter. If you're buying or selling a house, you're painting. Okay? You're either painting to make the house look better, or you bought the house because coral green doesn't look good with your stuff. Okay? Everybody uses a painter. You should have at least one painter. Okay? If you don't have one, go get one. How do you find them? Home Depot. Go stand in front of Home Depot. If you see some guy walking out, I tell you, I got two painters. I got one guy that's expensive, and I got another guy, they're Hispanic, they speak Spanish, mm -hmm. A, I need that, and they don't charge as much as the other guy. Is their work as good? It's great. Are they licensed? I don't even know if they're citizens, <laughs> but they do really good work. I have three electricians. One is a commercial, he's expensive. And the other one, um, he works with somebody else, but he never wants to do things W9. So I only hire him for a small staff. Right, so I got a guy named Oscar. Mm -hmm. I don't know his last name. He's in my phone as Oscar. <laughs> I'm Bill willing to bet he's not a United States citizen. But man, that guy could fix drywall like in nobody's business. And I call him all the time, Oscar, I got a job. <clears throat> and then I tell the people, you gotta pay this guy cash. And he's making yeah. a check. Yeah. He does great work. And yeah. they can make the decision on who they want to use. But Oscar refers me business. Sometimes I have to refer it out because I don't speak Spanish. My fault. <coughs> he runs into more <laughs> people that speak, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Danny Braza. I, I, I got something work out. Danny Braza. But I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. Make sure I get your clients. Okay? Those two ways. Yes, I know. Okay? Um, open houses. So who, who here can tell me, and if you already took my class, don't answer. Who here can tell me the very best day of the year to do an open house? I won't answer. Okay. Oh. Day, of the year, day of the year? Best day of the year. One single day is the <laughs> best day of the year. July 4th. Mm -hmm. Black Friday. Black Friday? Black Friday. Oh. Best day of the year to do an open house. Want to know why? Everybody's shopping. Okay. Pennsylvania, Chicago, uh, New York, right? New York. Aren't you from no. New York? Uh, Patty. He's Patty. Patty. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are you from? Bo Boston. Boston. Where they talk to who us. Else is, who else is from somewhere cold, snowy? Where from? Detroit. Detroit. Okay. So all of us that have come here from the Midwest, don't ask me why. It's something ingrained in our head, but Christmas is supposed to have snow. 
and Santa Claus and you're supposed to, that's so everybody goes home for Christmas. Where do they go for Thanksgiving? They go to Arizona. Okay? They go see grandma and grandpa in Arizona because the weather's crappy back where you come from. There's two feet of snow. You get at the airport at Logan and you're thinking, oh my God, it took us an hour to get to the airport because of the snow and the slush. Mm -hmm. And then they get off the plane here and they grab their golf clubs because all their buddies are shoveling snow and they're going out to play golf. So A, they love, pardon me, they love being here. And then on Black Friday, can you fly in an airplane with 19 bags anymore? cost you a fortune, right? You can't take all that stuff back. You don't go shopping when you're in Arizona on Black Friday, where everybody else, everybody's shopping, right, on Black Friday. So guess what they're doing? They go out and play golf, and then they're driving around going, God, the weather sucks in Detroit. And look at this, I'm playing golf, and it's November 20-something. We should think about moving here. Let's go out and look at some houses. I'm telling you right now, the very best open houses I've ever had around Black Friday. Long term, it's a long term play. It's not an immediate play. It's a long term play. So when I have open house on on uh, Black Friday and a lot of other days, I let people know right up front. Hey, I don't care if it takes us two years. You know, you might have to find a job down here. You know, there's a lot going into moving here. If you're just starting off, I don't care. I don't care. I'll work with you for two years. I don't. It's not a. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Okay, have that idea. Great day to do open house. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> okay, be different. So when I got my license, no problem. I told my wife, honey, this has to work. And we put all our chips in the middle. And I said, if this doesn't work, we're, we're going to need to go get a refrigerator box because we're going to be living under the viaduct in this box. Where it had to work. So I started doing open houses day one. Okay, I found a listing. Uh, Marin McCarthy, she's a she's an agent here. She had a listing on 64th between Greenway and Bell Road, right on right on a busy street, four lanes, double yellow line in the middle. And I sat that open every single day. Okay, I went to classes in the morning. I had my continuing education done in two months because mm -hmm. I found a CE class to go to every morning so I could gain some knowledge. And then I went and sat open house. So I bought a, a, a chair, a laptop, a little table, and a hot, uh, hot, hot spot. Wi -Fi. A hot spot hot so spot. I could connect to the internet. Yeah. And I had to be on my computer learning or doing stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. I, had, I have a huge database from 30 years of business. So I worked on that and I just sat there. And if somebody walked in, great. If they didn't, so what? So what's the advantage of sitting in an open house? This is the be different thing. What's the advantage of sitting in an open house Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then do it on the weekend? Here's what it is. So mom is going to pick up the kids from school at 2.30. So you want to start like around 2. Mom's going to drive by and go, oh, there's an open house. I'd love to stop by. i got to get the kids. So then she goes the next day. She goes, wow, that house is open again. So the third day, she's thinking, I'm going to leave a little bit early. I'm gonna swing by, if that, if that house is open again, I'm gonna swing by and stop in and check out that open house. It'll take three days, okay? She does the same thing every day, same route. She's not the only one that does that. So if I did open house on Tuesday, I will tell you that Thursday and Friday were my busiest days. And it was all right before school let out. And it was always mostly women. Just stopping in, oh, I gotta bring my husband back this weekend. Just so happens that we have an open house on Saturday from noon to four. Bring your husband back last night. Okay? I got five deals out of that open house in the first month. And one of them has now bought five houses from me. Just sitting in that open house. Just being different. Okay? Have a strategy. Open house is my thing. If standing out in front of Home Depot is your thing, do it consistently for a couple days. And you'll be amazed how many people have the same structure every day. Like if I'm a painter or something, I'm working in the area, I run out of tape, I send somebody or I go to Home Depot. And then the next day I need new rollers and I go to Home Depot. And then the next day I need more paint and I go to Home Depot. And it's the same thing every day. When people start seeing a consistency, they know a couple things. You work hard because you're there every day and they can almost count on you being there. And eventually they're gonna maybe stop and say hello. Does that make sense? Grocery store. I mean, I don't know how much 
chicken Kiev you can buy, but if you're growing everything, you're buying the same. You understand what I'm saying? So, so try to create some consistency and be a little bit different. You'll be amazed how many people will actually pick up on that consistency. So, okay? Johnny, if you're standing outside, let's say Home Depot, what are you doing? You're handing out flyers. You're just standing there. What are you doing? Yeah. You're so I'm gonna right? I'm gonna show you the flyer I use at the grocery okay. store. No, those are good questions. Thank you. Good question. Okay. So this is my open house sign-in sheet. This is gold. I will send this to you. I have copies of it. Mm -hmm. You can use it. I don't care. You have it on Facebook. But it's strategic. It's very strategic on how I use this. But it's gold. So when people come into my open house, I tell them, folks, I do have a signing sheet. You're not required to sign it, but I do ask that if you would just please read it. And everybody will, 99% of people will say, oh, I don't have to sign it, I'll read it. So they read option number one. Please take my email and send me 375 emails with information I do not need or want. So I'm looking for their reaction now, I'm watching. Most of them are like, eh, yeah. Then the second one, please take my phone number and call me and call me and call me until I want to strangle you. So at this point, they're laughing. Because yes. if they've been to any other open houses, they've heard all the BS. Oh, the owner requires that everybody sign in. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Okay. Oh, you, you have to sign in for security reasons. Or um, if you don't sign in, you can't look at the house. Or all this stuff that realtors say, which is, I, I think is silly. Yeah. Okay, because now you're forcing them to give you the wrong number. Okay, so the key to this is option three. Here's my information. Please contact me so I can create a professional business relationship that I can then anytime when I'm unhappy. And then this is the killer. This is the kicker right here. If you're Fred Flintstone, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, or Donald Duck, don't bother. I already have your information. <laughs> In other words, don't give me bullshit information. I, don't waste my paper. I don't need it. But as they're reading this, I'm, I'm gauging their reaction. If they're laughing, I got them. Because then I'm gonna tell them this, I'm gonna say, hey guys, look, if you're going to open houses, everybody's beating the snot out of you to get your email and your phone number so they can put you on a drip system and send you emails for the next 10 years that you don't want and, and phone calls. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not the way I do business. I'm very busy taking care of my serious clients. I spend a, a lot of time making sure that I'm there for my clients that actually are looking for a good realtor. I'm really good at what I do. I just don't have the time or the need to bother you. So if you'd like to give me your information, I'd be glad to set up a search for you. Don't let some realtor lie to you and tell you, oh, I spent all that time setting up a search and doing, it's gonna take me five minutes. You tell me what it is you're looking for, I'm gonna send you an email tomorrow. It's gonna ask a bunch of questions. How many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, with a pool or without, how many garage spaces, all the stuff that I need to know, I'm gonna plug that in the computer and it's gonna start sending you stuff. It can send it to you once a week, it can send it to you every day. You tell me how often you wanna get it. And then I'll follow up with you every month or so. <laughs> I'll give you a phone call. But if something comes across that you really like, give me a call. We'll go set it up and take a look at it. But the last thing I want to be is this guy. Oh, shit, it's that Johnny guy calling again. I don't ever want to be that. I want to be when you see my number, you're going to go, oh, hey, Johnny's calling. I wonder if he found something cool. Or, you know, that's what I want to be. That's why this is gold. This works for me. Okay? And if they don't want to sign, great. Have a blast. Make yourselves at home. No jumping on the bed. If you make something to eat, make sure you clean up after yourself and make sure you bring enough for me because I'm hungry. I want that for this weekend. It works, okay? Find a way to be different. Realtors are beating the snot out of people to try to get their information. I got news for you. People are sick of it. If they're out looking at houses, they've heard it all. Not a lot of people have seen this. Lenny doesn't do a shitload of open. A lot. Excuse me, Lenny. Did it work? Yeah, 100%. Everybody signed it, and I got two, I had three people come in. One was a look, uh, looky loo, and the other two people were looking for a property, one looking for realtors, and they were laughing, and you know, we're, you know, yeah, definitely send Just them opens stuff. it up, but it takes that, yeah, it, it takes that defense down. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, you're making them laugh. It's, it's not just another realtor beating you up to get your information. 
It works for me. If you want it, just let me know. I'll send it to you. Okay. okay. The word I. You should only use the word I three times. I read this in a book one time, and I'm not, I'm not so I don't believe in Zig Ziglar. I'll tell you that right now. So Zig Ziglar, has anybody heard of Zig Ziglar? Of I'll tell you why I don't like Zig Ziglar. He's got a lot of great stuff. He's a really smart guy, but I fundamentally disagree with him when he says you can make anybody a great salesperson. I don't buy that. I think you can make somebody a really good order taker, but you can't make somebody a really good salesman. You're either born that way or you're not. And then you gotta figure out how to perfect it. 32 years of getting my ass kicked, I finally figured it out. I've made more mistakes than any. I've made, I've said stuff, it would make the hair crawl on your arms. The stupid stuff I've said and gotten myself in trouble about whether it be gay or some stupid I said that I just totally stepped on my you know what. I learned from all of it. The one thing I'll credit myself for, if I did something stupid, I learned from it and tried not to do it again. Have you ever gotten a loophole though? No, 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 not loophole. Just, just I've said some stupid stuff, I, you know. I used to do stand-up comedy, so I mm -hmm. think I'm funny. Sometimes, <laughs> not so much. So, I'm not an Irish Catholic Jew. Figure that one out. It just means I can drink and do it cheap. <laughs> so, I, you should really only use I <laughs> three times, okay? So the first time you use I is I am, I'm Johnny Walker. The second time you use I is I'm qualified to, to talk to you about this because X. And the third time is I can be reached at this number. After those three I's, it's not about you anymore, it's about them. They want to talk about themselves, just like you do, I do. Everybody likes to talk about themselves. Well, I went to this Elton John concert, and before we're even done, I saw him in Vegas, it was like, you totally run right over what they were trying to say. Mm -hmm. try, to, try to just back up for a second, let them talk about themselves, because what they have to say is way more important than what you have to say, because they don't want to hear about you yet, okay? There will be a point where they want to hear about you. Oh, you're, you're qualified? Well, why are you qualified? Now all of a sudden, they want you to talk about you, but until it gets to that point, let them talk about them. We just moved here from Wisconsin. Oh, I know people in Wisconsin. No, 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 no. Really? Now take notes. Don't be afraid when you're talking to somebody to take notes. I have three kids. Three kids. <laughs> Write it down. You're telling them that you're actually interested in what they're saying. You might also be telling them, I have a terrible memory and I can't remember stuff, but it's important to me, so I'm going to write it down. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So write stuff down. Don't be embarrassed because then when it's your turn to talk, you're going to remember what it is you wanted to talk to them about. It's okay to take notes. Okay? Talk about them. And don't be on your phone. Get off your phone. That's my big catchphrase. Get off your phone. Okay? Your next, word, your next words are, are the lockdown. Okay? Be interested in what they say. Take notes. Ask questions. Respond. React yes or no. Don't go into a long dissertation on who, what, where, when, and why. Wait for them to ask you who, what, where, when, and why. Because then they really want to hear what you want to say. If you're giving up information that they don't want to hear, you're losing them. Okay? Don't sell. Stay, stay off your phone. Okay. I gotta wrap this up pretty quick. So, uh, I carry a resume in my open house kit. I have a resume that I actually have printed out and I give people my resume. I also have a list of questions that I tell people, hey folks, if I'm not the right realtor for you, take this, and these are the questions you should be asking whoever it is you're interviewing to be your realtor. And I have a list of five questions on it. Guess who knows the answer to all those five questions? Okay? How many sections to the contract are there? Name them. How much business did you do last year? Define it. These are all questions. If you're looking for a realtor, these are all questions you need to have the right answer to. Guess what's also on that piece of paper that I give them? My name and phone number. Okay? If I couldn't close them then, maybe I will later. But they're taking my name and number with them. If they didn't give it to me, at least they're walking out with my name and number. And they're walking out with my resume, which they may take a minute to look at. My resume is impressive. Okay? Question. Um, after interviewing my client, I was it was a um, seller. 
I can interview my client when we can agree on signing the contract. The last thing, she goes, well, I have one more question to ask you. I go, what is it? She goes, why should I hire you? Oh, God, love it. And I go, boy, I think I proved you that I care about you. So there you go. Thank you so much. Okay, so what was the most important thing to her? That, to her? No, 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 don't answer that question. The, the answer to that question, why should I hire you, is what was most important to her. And you should be able to read that by the questions that she asked you going through it. Mm -hmm. So read what she was asking, because what she said is way more important than what you said until just that moment. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So two ears and one mouth, mm -hmm. do twice as much listening as you do talking. Mm -hmm. Listen, 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 learn, 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 close the door. That was perfect. Okay. If somebody asked me that, I would be, I would be over the moon. I put all that in my marketing piece. Mm -hmm. The answers to that question I put in my marketing piece. So after I leave, they still have my answers to those questions. That's awesome. That's awesome. What is the most important thing people are looking for when they're looking for a realtor? Somebody who's genuine. Wait, 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 stop. Everybody could come up with a different answer. Mm -hmm. Okay? You just, you gotta have that right answer. You gotta read people and find out what it is they're looking for. So if they tell you, we fired mm -hmm. a realtor six months ago, they're telling you something. something yeah. I wanna know what, what was the problem. You know, we had a house on the market for six months that didn't sell. Don't be afraid to tell them that might have been your fault. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of that. They might be looking for somebody that's got a set that's gonna stand up to them and say, you know, this is how I negotiate as well. I don't take crap from nobody. You know, I have no problem telling somebody, you didn't sell your house because it was overpriced. I ask people, listing presentations, there's another huge mistake I made. I had a listing. All I had to do was show up and get them to sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Wrong. I did a half-ass presentation and I didn't get the listing because I thought it was mine. I'll never do that again. Full mom, full, all out, every listing presentation I make is the whole deal. I don't shortcut anything because I lost a $850,000 listing because I thought it was mine. It wasn't. Wow. Yeah, that hurt. That stung. That stung. I mean, I was already getting flyers made out. It was mine. It was done. Yeah, that sucked. So, yeah, be prepared. But, but that two in one rule, I teach little kids that when they're playing baseball. You got two ears and one mouth. You should do twice as much listening as you do talking, and they're all like looking at me like I got four heads. <laughs> but then they start getting it. You know, I'm here to teach you. I mean, so yeah, that mm -hmm. two and one is, is super important. I have that list of questions if anybody wants it, okay? Um, that whole elevator speech and all that, if you only got a couple seconds to tell people, figure out what your tagline is, what, what your one thing is, you know? If your one thing is, yeah, this is just a tool for me, you know, I'm not surgically attached to my phone. If you need me, call me, I'll be there for you. But if I'm working with you, I'm working with you. I'm, I'm here for you. I'm not here, I'm here. That's my thing. All right, I'm gonna whip through this, hit the spot. Grocery stores, I literally swear to God, after I was done with my open house at that house, my next step was to go to the local grocery store. I live at 104th and Shea. People shop either at Fry's at 92nd and Shea or 90th and Shea, or they shop at Albertsons at Via Linda and Mountain View, okay? One or the other, that's the two grocery stores. So I draw a map, here's Fry's, here's Albertsons, I took the logo for Albertsons, the logo for Fry's, and then I drew a dot where I live. <laughs> And it says, my house with my picture. And I told people, I'm your neighbor. I actually live in this area. And I stood in front of the grocery store and I handed out this. And just so you know, this is tough. This is not for the faint of heart. This is a tough, tough place. But here's my flyer. I hand that out to people in front of the grocery store and you would be amazed how much business I got. People that I met, you coached my kid. I didn't know you were a realtor. Boy, you're you're a realtor. I thought you only coached baseball. And I ran into more people. But keep this in mind. If you're at the grocery store, remember that everybody's got stuff. If the guy just went to the grocery store because his kid's home sick with a cough and he went to get some Tylenol or, or kids mm -hmm. medicine, he don't want to talk to you. Okay? Deal with it. Don't don't push. Okay? And never, ever, ever, ever give your flyer out when they're going in the store. Always wait till they're coming out. 
Okay, a couple reasons. When the manager starts fighting your flyer in the frozen peas, he's gonna get pissed and you ain't gonna be hanging out in his parking lot very long, okay? When they're coming out, a couple things. If I do a mailer to you, Lenny, and you go out and get your mail, and there's 18 mailers from realtors, how much of a look am I getting? If they got a garbage can next to the mailbox, that's where you're ending up. If you're coming out of the grocery store and I hand you my flyer and I'm not being intrusive, just, hey, I'm, I'm a local realtor, I live in the neighborhood, if I can help you in any way, please let me know. Don't be selling, don't, don't beat them up. They may not want to use you, they may not even want to read your thing, but I'll tell you what, they're going to look at it when you give it to them and nobody's going to just throw it on the ground, very few people. So they're going to walk to their car, they're going to look at it again when they're setting it on the seat, they're going to start their car, they're going to drive home, they're going to pick it up again. Now you're at three looks. They pick it up because now they got to throw it out when they get in the house. They're going to go in the house. They're going to open up the garbage can. They're going to throw it away. That's four looks. How many did I get when I mailed it? Nothing. One. Maybe, one. Maybe, Maybe one. Maybe one. So they're going to get four looks. So so something on there, like they're going to see, well, wait, Albertson's in front. I look, oh, wow, that guy's my neighbor. Even if that's all they see, if it's just something that catches them, you got four chances, maybe more, of, of just opening something up. And you'll be amazed how many people go, yeah, I'd really like to know what my house is worth. So you usually get five looks because the guy's usually, honey, look at this guy's name. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's really true. I, I do have one up. Everybody remembers my name. They're like, come on, really? That's your real name? And I tell people, yeah, I asked my dad, dad, what's the deal? Is that what you were drinking the night I was born? And he said, I don't know if that was true. Your name would be Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's a tough play, the grocery store, uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, you know, I, I'm not being chauvinistic, but you're better off being places where women shop than men, because men generally don't shop. Don't shop, or, or I can tell you right now that, that every man in this room has gone to the grocery store for a gallon of milk, walked in, got a gallon of milk, paid less. My wife, it is impossible for my wife to go to the store for a gallon of milk and walk out with only a gallon of milk. It's not physically possible for my wife to do that. So I'm only gonna assume that she's normal. You know, oh, look at this, there's a sale on that. Just happens. Just the nature of the beast, okay? I hope I am not offending anybody. But I told you I'd tell you the way it's just the truth. But, right on that. but let me tell you, so this grocery store gig is, it's, that's a tough, be ready to get your ass kicked because there's going to be people that will be ignorant. Get the hell away from me. Okay, I get it. They got, they're there to get medicine for their kid. They don't want to talk to you. Um, you know, just, just be consistent with it. Every night. I would not go home until I handed out 10 of those every night. And if I handed out eight and it was nine o'clock at night, <laughs> I was gonna be there till I handed out 10. It took me till 11. I handed them out and it worked. It just worked, okay? But remember, you're putting something in their hand. If you can get their information better, so if, if you get them to talk to you, say, hey, I know, like, you didn't come to the grocery store and meet a realtor, I get it. What's your, what's your number? I'll give you a call tomorrow. Maybe we can set up a time I can come over and chat with you and your wife. That's all you want. You don't want anything more than that. Don't start discussing the market. Is a buyer's market, seller. Did you know that rates are, forget about it. They didn't go to the store and were going, honey, I'm going to the store. I sure hope I meet a realtor while I'm there. It's not happening. It's just not happening, okay? Drug dealer, maybe. Realtor, no. All right, alternatives to the grocery store. Home Depot, we talked about that. Local restaurants, hotspot restaurants. Keep in mind, nobody goes out to eat dinner in hopes of meeting a realtor. Don't be intrusive. If you get an opportunity to let people know that you're a realtor, do it. Don't wear your name tag if you're out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, it, it, works, it works in reverse. Because now they're thinking, what a jerk. This guy's out for dinner with his wife. Take your leave business at home for a minute. <laughs> Have a nice dinner with your wife. What are you doing? Get it? So it can be read different ways. So if you're out on a date, don't wear your, don't wear your name tag. My name's on the side of my car. That was good enough. I'm parked in the parking lot. Somebody's seen my car. Maybe that's okay. That's what I do for a living. My wife knows that. Just me. Uh, lighting stores. If you have a local lighting store that's not a big chain, 
great place to have your car. Why? It's strictly a housing item. It's something that goes in homes. Mm -hmm. You don't buy lights for your boat at a lightning store, okay? Great place to have your car. Go in, let the guy know, hey, I'd be glad to refer you to my clients that are moving here that need lights, two-way street, offer him something. You might as well put my cards up on the counter. You'll be surprised how many of you, yeah, great. Maybe you should check into me. Here's my website so you know that I'm not like some idiot. So you're referring a good guy, okay? Locally owned private stores, anything that's locally owned, mom and pop, anything like that, great place to have your cards or a flyer or something. Okay, it's that time of year, spring training. I own cactusleadcondos.com. So I, I'm not doing it this year, but in years past, I have gone and stood outside of <coughs> the Chicago Cubs and the White Sox. My big thing, I got, I got uh, I'm just taking out billboards in Chicago. <coughs> My big thing is people relocating from Chicago. So the Cubs and Sox both do their spring training here. I go to the Cubs and Sox spring training and hand out flyers. If you're thinking about moving here, give me a call. Now's not the time you came to watch baseball. You didn't come here to meet a realtor, okay? Give me a call, be glad to talk to you about it. How long are you in town? Are you renting? If you get a little bit of a conversation, give me a number, I'll call you tomorrow. Great, and then they're done with it and you're done. It's almost like your excuse to say, okay, I gave my number, now let me go, I wanna go watch baseball. Great, I'm not gonna bother you now, I'll call you tomorrow. Are you coming to the game tomorrow? I'll call you in the morning, okay? Uh, Barrett Jackson was great. Phoenix Oakland, awesome place to hand out your cards. Just go over and stand and hand out flyers. 90% of them are gonna end up in a garbage can, but you only need one or two, right? People that are here for golf. I met a uh, gal from Iowa, who's a realtor in Iowa, and she's got a ton of people that are moving here from Iowa, and now I'm her referral for the people that are moving here from Iowa. Sitting there watching golf. My wife was right next to me. She was sitting in front of us. Her and her friends were getting hammered. So I just made a joke with her, and I was like, I was like where are you guys from? She goes, Iowa, and I go, oh, is it true what Iowa stands for? She goes, what? I go, idiots out wandering around. <laughs> she goes, yeah, that's true. That was it, that's all it took. Next thing you know, I'm, we're drinking, I don't know what it was together, but her and my wife are laughing. Now all of a sudden, I'm her referral for all the people moving here from Iowa. Just talk. Super Bowl, Farmer's Market, Craft Fairs, not me. Be bold, grow a set, excuse me ladies, I don't mean to be crass, but just guts. Have some guts, get out of the box. If you're uncomfortable doing something, do it. 90% of the time, it's probably gonna get you business. If it's something you don't think, ah, I could never do that, try it. If it works, you're ahead of yourself. Do your neighbors know you're a realtor? Okay, so everybody where I live, there's 110 houses in my little tiny subdivision, and my neighbor straight across the street sold his house and he didn't use me. Was I pissed? Yeah, yeah but he had a good excuse. So his excuse was, Johnny, of course I wanted you to list my house, but how do I know that somebody comes to look at my house and you don't like them and they're about to be your neighbor? Are you gonna give them 100% knowing that this is about to be your neighbor? And I thought that was a very legitimate excuse to not use me to sell a house. I got it. I, what argument do I have? Right? You know, what if they were Irish people? I'm like Irish people. I am one. Most of them are. You understand what I'm saying? I'm kidding. I'm not being, don't throw darts at me. <laughs> Midwest. You pack it Midwest, yeah. Detroit, Chicago, yeah. you know. Yeah, nice baseball. Can you call me on that one? Um, yeah, but let your neighbors know. Because you live in the neighborhood, so who knows the neighborhood better? Would you rather a realtor that lives in Ahwatukee be selling your house in your neighborhood? I know this neighborhood. Ask me where the closest animal hospital is. I already know. Ask me where the best Chinese food is. I already know. Ask me where the best deals on chicken wings are. I already know, so, okay? Um, the whole be uncomfortable thing, totally up to you. You wanna get out of your comfort zone, you might surprise yourself as to what you could find out there. If you just give it a whirl, try something different. Maybe one of these things I told you, just try it out. If it works out, great. But give it a good chance. Give it a true, honest chance. And be prepared to get your butt kicked, okay? Because it, it's not easy. You're gonna, get your, you're gonna get your ass handed to you. People are gonna be rude. Get, get away from me, I don't wanna talk to you. Oh, okay, I get it, it's 
Cool. Everybody's got stuff, right? Um, okay. Opposing realtors are not your friends. Everybody understand that? <laughs> don't let an opposing realtor pretend that they're your friend. Oh, Johnny, don't worry. We'll take care of all that. No, 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 no. Let's get that in writing. Okay? No matter what. They may come across as your friend. There's some very devious realtors out there. Once again, I have learned from my own mistakes. Okay? Get everything in writing. Try to avoid client-to-client -client interaction if you can. Um, don't ever assume you have the job. Remember I told you about that? Um, opposing realtors' clients, are they off limits? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Oh, depends. If you just closed the deal, are the opposing realtors' clients off limits? Nope. I'm calling them. Why? Because no. I believe 90% of realtors shouldn't even have a license. How many people have done a, a deal with the other realtor and thought, oh my God, how this guy actually tied his shoes and drove to work today is a miracle. You know, there's some really bad realtors out there. And guess what? 90% of them don't follow up with their clients. Once they sell them a house, they're done. They put them on a drip system, totally impersonal. You know, oh yeah, you're on my drip system. What do you mean? I've sent you 12 emails this year, one a month. You're not, you're, that's, no. When I, somebody's my client, I, I call and talk to them. I pick up the phone and talk to them. Do they get a drip or something? Yeah, maybe, but they're still getting a phone call. 90% of other realtors don't do that. <laughs> so are they off limits? Absolutely not. The deal's closed, call them up. Hey, just wanted to check, how's the house working out? I found this restaurant, I was over there, I had a client the other day, I was in here. You ever heard of this restaurant called uh, Lupe's? God, their breakfast was awesome. Yeah, we did, we tried that place. That's all it takes, you know? If you have any questions, guys, if I can, you know, if you ever wanna know what the value is or anything, call me, I'll answer any questions for you. Don't be afraid, okay? We'll wait. I'm going over, huh? How much is this one? But it's worth yeah. every minute of it, okay. Johnny. Binzer, be the expert and take control. Binzer bites the head <coughs> right square in the butt. The binger can make or break your deals. Don't, don't let anybody control the binger. okay? You are not, my card says realtor. It doesn't say electrician, plumber, painter, AC guy. It doesn't say any of that. It says realtor. Do I know a little bit about all that stuff? Yes, I do. Have I educated myself on the stuff I didn't know about? Yes, I have. Take control of it. Lenny flips houses. Try putting a binzer past Lenny that's full of crap. It ain't happening. He knows what he's talking about. Educate yourself on what the ins and outs are of every house. <coughs> every house has commonality. Every house has a roof. Every house has walls. Every house has electricity. Every house has plumbing. Every house has air conditioning. All the basics, you should have knowledge on. Okay? And if somebody ever sends you a binzer and says, refer to the inspection report, fix all, don't accept it. Don't accept it. Tell your buyers we're not accepting this. Tell your sellers we're not accepting this. Define what it is that you want fixed. And if they don't, take it to the next level. Take it to your broker and have their broker contact their broker. Because that's bullshit. Or just tell your clients, nope. If you'd like to come up with a specific list of stuff, stuff that you'd like repaired, we'll consider it. But this list is a no. Don't don't be shocked. Don't be shocked when the buyers all of a sudden get on their realtor's ass and says, do what he wants, because we're gonna lose this house because you're too lazy to fill in the right form. Call them out. Call them out. It's only gonna make realtors better. My goal. This open house blitz we did last weekend, mm -hmm. that was my idea. Mm -hmm. I'm only being a little selfish in it, it was great. I got nothing out of it, right? I don't, it's not my company. It was great for this company, but what did I get out of it? The one thing Remax has over my home group is a balloon, that's it. Brand recognition. So the more open houses we have, the more how my home group signs out there, the more brand recognition we get, that helps me, okay? 
So if I can make one realtor better at their job by doing these classes, then it makes our brokerage better. B be better than all of them. It ain't real hard to do because most of them are complete idiots. Sorry, I get on my soapbox about that. I'm dealing with one right now that I, I literally told him, I said, I'll tell you what, but do me a favor. Just step away from this transaction. You'll get your commission. Let me do all the work. Just wow. don't even get involved. Just stay out because you're gonna blow it. This is gonna go sideways because of you, because you have no idea what you're doing. Just let me finish it. I'll get it to the finish line, you'll get paid. Maybe take some time to learn. And I have no problems calling realtors out on that. I just don't. It's, I mean, you think that'd be pretty pretty bad for me to do that, but you'd be surprised. Um, okay. Wow. That all makes sense? It does. Chill out. Chill out, yeah, chill out. Every deal is not life or death, okay? And then one last, one last thing about my home group, I'll go right back to what I started out with. This, this company created a culture of help and learning and assistance. If you're not taking advantage of it, if you got stuff that you, you know, search yourself, be authentic with yourself. If there's stuff that you don't think you're good at, come in here and get help. Make yourself better at it. Because if you're not, it's your fault. They have created a culture. My door is always open. You've been in my office. Thank you. I'm coming to visit you again. Yeah, and I mean, there's always somebody here to help you. Be respectful of people's time, but there's always, um, I'll help anybody. It's, I don't get anything out of it. I don't want your money, you know? And that's the bottle, for me to get up there, too. Bottle of Jameson is always a nice thing to find in my office. <laughs> this time. Okay? Anybody got any questions? My next deal, we'll go home and celebrate. Did, any, did anybody think this was a complete waste of time? <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Thank Jim. You. Jim thinks it's a waste of time. That's my former lender. It's all real estate. Also, how do you follow up? This is probably another class. Can you say they may buy in one year, in two years? You put them in your database and probably. So I put them in something called Lion's Desk, and then I categorize them. So I have I have so many categories, it's ridiculous. Yes, okay. I actually need to limit them. But I'll put something in there, and I, I've got a, a thing called long-term play, and then I've got short-term play, I've got six months. So I'll put them in there, and then I'll move them around. But if it's a long-term play, I call them once a month. Hey guys, just checking in. No, I call. I call. Upstairs, though. I don't do any trip campaigns. I just don't. I, I call people. I'm old school. I call people. I so so everybody can email. You want to know what email is? Email is for people that are afraid to talk to people. That's my opinion. I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. I'll pick up the phone. If they answer my call, it's going on. I haven't talked yet. I was just checking in. People have the let's say for the less they don't call, they text, mm -hmm. they email. So oh, we discussed this earlier. So it's best to find out how they want to be yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to be text and email. But, That's what they said, no phone calls. But I'm a phone call guy. Yes. I'm going to call them. Okay. Even if they want me to text an email, I'll text an email, but I'm calling them. But they're not responding. It's okay. Then, mail. Okay. Text an email, do what they ask, but I'm calling them. I'll even call just to bitch at them. Hey, you told me to send you a text. I send you a text, you don't text back. So now I'm calling. What do you want me to do? I can still text. Or do you just want to be off my, do you want to be off my list? I can take you out of my database, no problem. Because if they don't want to be in it, I'll see you. I just sent an email out to my entire database and asked everybody, if you don't want to be on my, on my database, tell me and I will remove you. And I lost half. It was great. It was awesome. Yes. That was 1,500 people that I don't have to worry about anymore. Yes. They were never going to do business with me anyway. Yes. See ya. Play it out. This is true. Later. Do you have a lender that you're partnered up with? I do. Who is it? Um, his name is Brad Tate. He sucks. You should talk to Jim. <laughs> do you have a lender? Yes, I do. Uh, he sucks. You should talk to Jim. I don't but know her, so I can't remember. Do you have a lender? I'm still looking at Brandy. Jim. What's that? Brandy. I'm Brandy. Jim. Good lender. You, you need a good lender partner. Talk to this guy. I have a. Um, I, need a card I, need, I just got a lead from uh, Chicago last time. He called me.
From where? Chicago. How do you pronounce that? I say Chicago. No, I, say Roman. I, I, I just said Chicago too. Yeah. You said Chicago. Yeah. Jackie. <laughs> <Chicago. laughs> We're both from Chicago. Oh, oh you got both from Chicago. from Chicago. I love it. I love it. Um, what a lady. Okay, go ahead. He, uh, this is my first time. I wanted to do interview him on, online, but I've never, I always do face to face. I'll never do it online. He wants to come by the end of March. But he wants to start looking. I never email properties till they're ready. I ask him about it. The thing that I think I did wrong is I didn't create a relationship. I want to say it's a business. Okay, what are you looking for? Um, do you have money? Do you need finance? I didn't talk anything personal. Okay. I agree with you 100%. But let me give you a, a, give you the magic line for anybody from Chicago. Okay. Ask him if he's a Cubs fan or a Sox fan. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm really truly not kidding. Okay. So, so Sox fans are Southsiders, Cubs fans are Northsiders. Okay. Everybody in Chicago understands the difference between a Sox fan and a Cubs fan. There's really no difference, but everybody knows that that's, that's just a talking point. So if I meet somebody from Chicago, Jim, how many times have we been open house? Yeah, we're from Chicago. I go, Cubs or Sox? If they say Cubs, much. I'll say, get out. <laughs> Turn around, get out of here. <laughs> I really do that. I don't really want them to leave, okay. but now they know I'm a Sox fan. So now what did I do? You just he's a, he's people. A, no, I didn't. No, 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 I didn't. I just locked him in. He's a Chicago and he gets it. Everybody's he's one of my people. Okay. It's like a tribe thing. It's like I got a <laughs> like a scar. Oh no, we're from the same <laughs> tribe. It just opens it up. So so hey, I gotta tell him, say, hey, this guy in my office told me to ask you this. Okay. Do you like the Cubs or the Sox? Okay. And he'll have an answer for it. Okay. And tell him, I don't know why he told me and then I have to tell him. Okay. Say, I don't know why he told me to ask that. He said it was a Chicago thing like like something about pizza from Chicago. You guys are big on your. So now all of a sudden it's not just business. You just opened up just a little, little okay. window of, of I'm not, I'm a person. Nothing like. I'm not just a pizza. realtor. I'm actually a person. Okay, because the problem that I think I have also that I went too friendly sometimes and I end up losing a client but earning a friend. No one's your customers. Yeah. So. I think we've all done that. Okay. But but I think you, you need to you find gotta find you gotta find a balance and, and just you know so so here I'll tell you so so my coach has me stopping the comedic approach because okay. I use comedy to let people off the hook. And, and this is like so I have thirty years in business, mm -hmm. I've never had a coach. It was really hard for me to, to let somebody mm -hmm. look in my little jar as like yeah. mine. I owned it for thirty two years. Who's gonna tell me what to do? Day one, he punched me right square in the face. He goes, you let people off the hook by using comedy. Like you'll ask somebody, hey, you wanna buy this house? You know, I got one of those little things, I could do it on my phone. <laughs> and I never wait for the real answer. When, when I really ask me, oh. do you wanna buy this house? Okay, uh, no. Okay, but now I got an answer. Yeah. Instead of me giving them an out by making a joke, okay. I give them an out so they don't ever have to really answer the question. And it was so hard for me when he told me that because I was he was so right. And it just pissed me off because he was so right. I did it all the time. You know, do you want to buy this house? <laughs> you know, did you bring a big suitcase full of money? I'd make a joke <laughs> when when I really wanted to know the answer to the question. Uh -huh. You know, so now I don't do that anymore. And I'm like, hey, is this the right house for you guys? And then I wait. No, yeah. Okay, so if they tell me you know, we like it, but it doesn't have this, this, and this. I said, okay, well, let's find the right house for you. Okay? I'm gonna send you a couple things. I'm gonna send you a buyer broker agreement. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a contract between us, mm -hmm. okay? That tells us that, that I'm working for you, and in turn, you're gonna be working for me. We're gonna do this together. It's a team. I'm gonna send you that. I'm gonna send you some other paperwork, but most importantly in that email, I'm gonna send you a list of questions, okay? okay. How many bedrooms, how many car garage, with a pool, without, HOA, what's the geographical parameters? I got this all, I can send it to you, it's all, I just mm -hmm. gotta, yeah. I just gotta paste it into an email. But I tell them right now I've created a business relationship. Doesn't mean we can't have fun, okay. you know? If they're like, yeah, we like this area. If they tell me, oh, well we like the area between the 51 and Scottsdale Road, Greenway North, okay? Yeah, I can tell them, oh, this is perfect. So one of these days when we're out looking at houses, there's this barbecue place at Tatum and Bell. Okay. 
called Dengue's. It's awesome. We're going to have lunch there one day. So when we're out looking on a Saturday, mm -hmm. let's make sure we include some time to have lunch over there. Okay, so now what have I done? Created, um, yeah, now we're going to have fun, actually. Have fun. We're going to have, you know, I, plus what else did I do? And this guy really knows, he knows that area. He knows yeah. where the best barbecue place is. And, you know, I mean, so you're, you're accomplishing a lot by just be okay. you. Um, anybody else questions? <laughs> yeah. I choose, but go ahead. Okay, I need a good inspection and termite inspection all in one, one stop, right? Does he do termite? Yeah. This was the question. Yep. Okay, the, on the referral page, the vendors? The, uh, yeah, and, yes, and is this off? No, this is there open. Yeah, you can find them on, the, on your, on my home group website page. Johnny, I need you. And they're great. And they're and great. I don't know. <laughs> All right, everybody's going to have to ask. Well, I'm going to write. My brother's name is and my father's name and my grandfather's name is John. Oh, it's more than that? Hey, guys. No. If you wind up with a house in what you have prior to your whole career, it would be a very wrong thing. I see. I see. I see. I see. I'm like, more about my feet. When I first started, uh, one of my friends and I want to wear it out. And I want to use the red droppers, like the most candy, the plastic red droppers. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Keep them warm. And he wants to have to walk to the park to play hockey. So I have to clean the house. So we 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 have to clean the house. But we put our skate guys on. We put our skate on in a warm, you know. They don't want to go there. It's like the required It's like the required to If somebody ever got upset You can't even make an offer. If you were using I can't even make an offer in Arizona. Put those socks on, then the bread bag, then another bread socks. You can make your offer. So it's the same thing on the If you're offering cash, it's the same thing on the cash side. We have to show proof of I want you to email me some of these items. Okay? How do you make anything you Okay. I have a couple of photos. Here's the presentation, by the way. Oh, good. Data I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. Hopefully, you got something on okay. it. Sherry, whatever. Yeah. But do you have a copy of. So I will go ahead and find the right thing. Oh, okay. Great, thanks. Very nice. Super fun. <laughs> That's right. Super fun. You're such a humor. So I'm going to get off the septic. I'm big on vets issues. I'm a disabled vet, so I do a lot of stuff for. Do they want to give it to you? So we send it to you. Okay. And you're with Homespire? I am. How come you're not with us? Uh, <sighs> Good question. I guess there so might be. There's one realtor I really like with Homespire. Very unusual circumstances like that where everybody knows that this is a very long person. But then I met this gal with Homespire. She says, how much is that? But it wasn't his name. It was on the office. Yeah. So I'm going to have to get it. Never works for you. Huh? Never works for you. Well, we'll see. I really have to love. Uh, some of the talks I think you guys do. So, I got you guys. So, so, you and I are a little closer in age. But feel free to use my line. But there's a lot of young people who are using finance. So, there's a lot of young people who are using finance. So, there's a lot of young people who are using finance. So, there's a lot of young people who are using finance. They created this culture of providing funds. What he's looking for, and I do know under that time, right? For somebody who wants to see. Well, I'm going to ask you to come in and get with Clubhouse. Because they know I've been in business long. They're not afraid. Good luck. Well, maybe I'll come to somebody else. I'm going to ask you to come in. I don't know. 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 He ends up with 200 open houses. He has signs everywhere like this. The roof covered it. It's, it's that kind of stuff that they do here. It's just, it's, it's, I'm telling you, I, I get the tattoo of like, <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you pulling okay. out with a double deal. Yeah, I double ended, <laughs> I double -ended my listing.